Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, ADPKD, is a rare genetic disease characterized primarily by the development and progressive enlargement of fluid-filled cysts within the kidneys. ADPKD is a systemic disease characterized by both renal and extrarenal manifestations. Over the course of disease progression, common sequelae include cyst infections, cyst hemorrhage and hematuria, intracranial aneurysms, hepatic cysts, hypertension, back pain, side pain, and urinary tract infections. ADPKD is an inherited condition. When one parent has ADPKD, their children have a 50-50 chance of inheriting it. However, even patients within the same family can present with variations in disease characteristics, such as age of onset and rate of progression. ADPKD can initially be difficult to detect because symptoms may be scarce in early stage disease. Over time, the enlarging cysts can cause an increase in total kidney volume up to four times its normal size. The development and progression of these fluid-filled cysts can contribute to compression and loss of the surrounding functional renal tissue over many decades. However, in early stage disease, healthy nephrons compensate for damaged nephrons, causing estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, to be normal or slightly reduced despite the fact that damage is occurring. EGFR can remain intact through prolonged periods of time due to compensatory hyperfiltration, but will ultimately decline steadily thereafter. So while the enlarged cysts can ultimately contribute to irreversible loss of kidney function, the progression of ADPKD can be difficult to track because kidney function alone is not an effective indicator of disease advancement. ADPKD can progress significantly while EGFR presents as normal. In these cases, a normal EGFR may be masking irreversible kidney damage. In most patients with ADPKD, serum creatinine levels do not rise until a patient is in his or her 40s or 50s, when the kidneys are grossly enlarged and previously healthy parenchyma has incurred serious, irreversible damage. Therefore, it may be better to measure both EGFR and total kidney volume, TKV, when assessing disease progression. The two main mechanisms leading to cyst formation and expansion in ADPKD are fluid secretion and cell proliferation. A key driver of these mechanisms is an increase in intracellular levels of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is a secondary messenger molecule that controls various cell signaling pathways. Cyclic AMP leads to the activation of CFTR chloride channels, resulting in fluid secretion. Cyclic AMP-mediated activation of cell proliferation has been shown to occur via activation of pro-proliferative pathways, such as MAP kinase. Elevated cyclic AMP levels in ADPKD are believed to be driven by two main mechanisms. Impaired calcium regulation of renal tubular epithelial cells driven by genetic mutations of PKD1 and PKD2 genes and elevated serum levels of vasopressin, an antidiuretic hormone, also known as AVP or ADH, and upregulation of the V2 receptor. The genes PKD1 and PKD2 encode proteins present in renal tubular epithelial cells. A mutation in PKD1 is responsible for a defect in polycystin 1, PC1, a transmembrane protein located on the primary cilia and cell membranes of renal tubular epithelial cells. Patients with a PKD1 mutation account for approximately 85% of all ADPKD cases and are characterized by rapid disease progression. A mutation in PKD2 is responsible for a defect in polycystin 2, PC2, a non-selective cation channel located on the primary cilia, cell membranes, and endoplasmic reticula of the renal tubular epithelial cells. Patients with a PKD2 mutation account for approximately 15% of all ADPKD cases in which the disease progresses more slowly. These defects in either PC1 or PC2 can disrupt calcium homeostasis in the renal tubular epithelial cells, resulting in decreased intracellular calcium and a subsequent increase of cyclic AMP. This can lead to impaired regulation of the proliferative and secretory pathways. 
Vasopressin is a powerful modulator of cystogenesis via binding on vasopressin V2 receptors and stimulation of cyclic AMP production. Vasopressin levels have been shown to be elevated in ADPKD. Studies have shown that vasopressin is actually the main driver of elevated cyclic AMP levels in renal tubular epithelial cells. Studies have also shown that both vasopressin and mutations in the PKD1 or PKD2 genes are required to lead to the development of cysts in ADPKD. Therefore, impaired calcium regulation and elevated levels of vasopressin contribute to an increase in the production of cyclic AMP. In summary, increased cyclic AMP levels resulting from low intracellular calcium and elevated vasopressin lead to an increase in cell proliferation and fluid secretion, the main mechanisms of cyst formation and growth in ADPKD. Over time, these cysts contribute to an increase in total kidney volume, destruction of kidney tissue, and diminishing kidney function. And while much is known about the etiology and pathophysiology of ADPKD, advancement of the disease can often go unnoticed, as normal kidney function can mask the severity of disease progression until irreversible damage has already occurred.